Hey guys, BlackRain79 here with DragTheBar.com, back here with part 3 of NL10 of the uh, Crushing the Micros 2 series, the final installment. Um, so far we've played two sessions here in PokerStars NL10. Um, uh, things have been going pretty well. I'm up uh, just over a buy-in. Um, uh, the tables have been okay. Um, you know, fish are, you know, not in abundance, which is pretty standard with today's games, but... Um, you know we're finding them uh, here and there. I did. Uh, I saved two of the tables from the last session, um, and uh, I've created uh, or I've loaded up two uh, two other ones as well, uh, or two new ones. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Um, just going to continue on playing our kind of tag game, abusing late position, of course. Um, uh, I'm really paying attention to uh, players with, sh you know, uh, well, not so much shorter stacks, but um, stats, uh, you know, 6-6 six, six type players that uh, just making sure that you, we uh, pound on their blinds and, uh, you know, make them pay for uh, for sitting around waiting for aces. Um, you only get dealt aces one, one in every 220 hands, I think, so uh, we'll make them pay for that. Uh, this guy does seem to be the weak link at the table, so um, we'll try to play as many hands as we can with him. So, um, I guess one of the uh, shorter players shipped, so we don't have much of a decision there. Uh, I will just set mine with the sixes here. Although when we flop uh, a flop like that, we're not obviously going to be going anywhere. So, um. I think a raise is fine here. It's definitely um you can play this hand either way. I mean I if he's got an overpair, I don't see how he's gonna um be thrilled about uh facing a raise or shipping over here, so um I think call's fine, I think raise is fine. I mean uh obviously a raise just accomplishes that. It allows me to uh to take it down there. <clears throat> um Another thing is I, you know, I've got 58 hands on him, so he should have 58 hands on me. So basically we don't know each other. Um, I don't think I've played a pot with that guy that I recall, um, you know, even in these in these videos. So uh, he doesn't have any real reason. He probably sees me as a fairly tight player. I don't think he has any real reason to, to think that I would be getting out of line. So, and also, I mean, that flop, he just, if he's got an overpair or whatever he's got, ace gang, whatever, um, you know, that, that kind of flop just basically smacks my range. I mean, it's, it's mid, I mean, when I just call pre-flop there, I mean, my range should be, uh, exactly what it was, pocket sixes. It should be, uh, um, one of those kind of hands a lot. So, um, uh, I'm just going to three bet here. The, uh, ace coin, hang, I'm going to get it in against this guy. And uh, fold versus this guy if he ships. Um, so yeah, I mean that that flop kind of smacks my range. So um, you know I should definitely uh, be able to rep that pretty well. Um, kind of uh, standard three bet there, or yeah, I mean standard flop bet as well. I get called. Uh, I don't really know what I can do, but uh, just kind of give up here. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, I'm just giving up at this point. There's not really any way to, uh, to represent anything, so. Um, obviously, given the hand that he had, uh, we could have made him fold, perhaps, but not always. I, I generally, uh, just don't, uh, without a whole lot of information, I don't, uh, try to stay out of, uh, too much trouble, uh, just barreling guys and hoping they'll fold. Uh, given stack sizes here, there's really nothing we can do at all but uh, just give up. So I don't think we yeah, we don't have any outs. So it's pretty much the way she goes. <clears throat> So would this guy have jack four or something? Yeah, so it's obviously not a very good player. Just keep isolating him. Let's 
So hopefully it's got 10-2 or something this time. I'm just going to steal pretty wide here. Really tight player there, so. Uh, it's a player, so we'll just get it in there. I don't really care. Okay, oh, that's unfortunate, but whatever. Um, obviously, just going to get it in here against this guy. No, oh, poo. There we go. And that's so much for Jeanette. Uh, so I'm not really sure what happened to our run good here. I think it's, uh, we used all of it up, I guess, in the first two videos. Um, this is going really, really bad so far. But, uh, <laughs> uh, pretty happy with the way I played every hand so far, so can't really, uh, can't complain. Uh, when they check twice and it's just shown no interest on the pot there, I think you uh, always need to uh, just take a stab at it with any two. <clears throat> Uh, normally I would just uh, three bets, uh, or sorry, I raise preflop with a hand as weak as uh, as that hand. I'm going to fold. Um, I'm going to fold this and... Uh, oh, um, Yeah, we'll just 3-bet, or 4-bet, I guess, basically. It's just kind of like the guy, um, his preflop raise was only 1%, but uh, which uh, is <laughs> not so fun when, uh, when I got Kings there and he's already 3-bet, but um, it is only over 77 hounds as well, so... Um, and we'll just continue to uh, isolate. <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, I've got a fish on every single table now. So it's, it's really funny with these tables, how they kind of uh sort of go in and out with uh sometimes they're really all tight and then all of a sudden fish start popping up out of nowhere so um it's definitely still a good idea to chase the fish around and not wait for them to just show up at your table but uh it just goes to show that it does happen uh this guy seems to be pretty crazy so far as well so i think he seems to be raising every hand so <clears throat> Uh, this guy's waiting for aces, so we'll worry as any two. Uh, this guy's really bad on table three, so I'm going to isolate pretty wide against him and uh, just try to play as many pots in position against him as I can. Um, I don't fold to min three bets, so. Um, I should say, I mean, if he had only started the hand with like $2 or something, yeah, I'd fold to a min three bet, but if he's got anything like a reasonable stack size, so uh, I'll be fine. Um, in a situation like this, I'm pretty much just going to ship um, 
I expect to have uh, uh, the best um, percentage to win the pot most of the time here. Yeah, actually, we got it in really good, so so that's pretty cool. Oh, I thought I lost it. I actually won. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes, obviously, you're going to get it in uh, tremendously good like that. Um, but uh, he's also a weaker player of fish, so um, I, I, um, I expect him to have a ton of uh, uh, pair, maybe pair and combo draws. I'm kind of closer to flipping against like a 7-8, I think, here. Um, but I expect him to have a ton of hands, like a, I don't know, queen eight or something like that, where I basically got two overs and a flush draw, so I'm mathematically about, uh, closer to 60% to win the hand, so. Um, I'm gonna take a stab at this pot. Um, he's a net, uh, and the fish, uh, might fold, so. I'm last to act there. If I was first to act or in the middle, I would uh, probably, or almost certainly not see that. They, they've shown weakness, though, so I'll take a step. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so there's a poster on table one. Um, my plan definitely is to uh, to take advantage of that if I can. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how the hand plays out. <clears throat> uh, it's obviously kind of weird when they actually do come in for a raise. Um, I'll just fold. I don't mind um, just three betting there, just because like he's probably bad. But uh, you know, I, I think generally I just wait for a better spot. So that's unfortunate. The fish on table three give away all, all his money or all my money. <laughs> And he doesn't reload, which sucks. And without that fish on table three, this table looks pretty awful, so I'm going to do something I've never done in a video. I'm just going to go find a new table. I don't think there's any real reason to uh, stick around on some of these ridiculous tables. And there's other ones right here. I think I've gone over this before, but I've talked about uh, using table manager. Um, which is a component of Hold'em Manager and uh, sorting your tables by VPIP. And generally when I'm playing, um, I like to just stack my tables actually in the middle. Um, or actually, uh, or yeah, in, in, the, uh, in the middle here. Like so, and um, okay, so the plan here is going to be just to uh, three button get it in against this guy. Um, normally I would just be stacking my tables like this as I'm playing and um, I can uh, just double click on the uh, the table manager here and it'll automatically bring me to the table um, and then I can sort them by VPIP and uh, just get rid of the ones that uh, have the low VPI or uh, yeah have the low VPIP so uh, normally I just stay on tables uh, with videos but uh, that table seemed pretty bad so um, definitely um, 
you know, if you're playing NL2 or NL5, um, you don't, I mean, you should, you, you should uh, still table select a decent amount, or I should say NL4 as well for those of you playing on the merge network. Uh, you definitely should still table select a little bit, but I don't think it's quite as important as uh, um, NL10 and especially NL25 and up. Uh, you really need to be uh, keeping an eye on your tables because uh, some of them can be uh, pretty bad from time to time. <clears throat> Uh, the ace queen here, I think calling is perfectly fine as well, but I think I will three bet this time. Guy's pretty active. Um, it's for value basically, so it's definitely okay to just call though as well and um, play a pot in position. Likely or having him dominated a fair amount of the time, I think he's going to have ace tens and ace jacks, maybe even ace nine in his range there uh, a decent amount, considering that he's uh, raising twelve percent of hands. <clears throat> so table one here we actually have two fish so that is an outstanding table at nl 10 these days so do not leave that one for your life <laughs> yeah you just you really need to look around a lot of it depends on the time of the day as well i still uh <laughs> I still find uh, North American players to be by far the worst. I don't know if that's a stereotype at all. I mean, I am North American. I, probably a lot of people watching this video are North American as well. I I just think Canadians and Americans, and maybe it's South Americans too, just seem to be by far the worst at poker. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm playing at like, you know, noon on a Pacific time. I think that you know, if you're playing during prime time of, uh, you know, Pacific or Eastern uh, Eastern Standard time hours, I think are still the best times to play. Even though it's not not the most people are online, there's more people online during the European prime time, like right now. Um, I still just find the games to be much better in North American prime time. I, I don't know, call me crazy, but uh, uh, just seems to be a more profitable hour, and obviously on weekends as well. The tables will get a lot better on weekends. I'm playing on a uh, Thursday right now, so it's uh, not the the best day. Um, you know, if you can, I mean, uh, and I think most people here do. Uh, most people watching this probably are not professional players, so most of their play comes on the weekends, which is a good thing as well. I mean, the, it just it really doesn't matter what time of day uh, the games on uh, uh, Saturdays and Sundays are just uh, always you know, just that much better. It's not even close. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, with the eights there, just going to uh, isolate and uh, just going to make a standard C bet on the king high flop there and expect to take it down most of the time against a guy who's uh, probably just uh, set mining. Um, yeah, same thing here. The guy in the big blind is really tight, and uh, this guy's just limping again, um, so we'll just uh, raise. Um, and uh, same thing here. It's just a min 3 bet. I don't really fold to, three, to min 3 bets if they've got any kind of stack at all. So this guy's limp folded twice now on table 2, and uh, we'll just let it go here. Uh, I don't normally tag people as a fish unless their um, their VPIP is over thirty percent. But definitely with somebody somebody like this here on table two, um, it's definitely obvious that he's a weaker player that we're going to be able to make money off of. Um, especially considering that we have position on him. I mean, he's he's one of those limp folding types. So, um, although I don't love to stay at a table. For somebody like this, I think you can find a bit better of a table. It's definitely not the worst spot in the world either. So, um, 
So yeah, uh, really tight guy here, table three. So I'm just gonna steal a penny too. <clears throat> so table one's kind of getting shorthanded, but um, you know I definitely try to stay on tables uh, when there's lots of fish on them, um, um, no matter what. So unfortunately, another one of them left, but. Uh, uh, normally when I'm mass tabling, like I'm playing like 16, 18 hand, or tables, um, I don't like to play when it's under six-handed, uh, or I should like five-handed or less, basically, because I think the game uh, conditions change, and it's just kind of like you're doing several things at once. Um, um, but definitely when I'm playing uh, just, you know, a couple tables like this, uh, it's it's fine. I'll definitely stick around uh, against fish, and uh, I even play head up, uh, heads up uh, during a video. It's not a big deal. I guess I should mention um, my pre, uh, or what do you call it, uh, this the, uh, the 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 bet sizings that are already set up on the uh, PokerStars tab there. I think most people are probably aware of that, but you can go into the options. Uh, where is it? Bet slider options, assuming you play on Stars, of course, and you can set those to whatever you want. You can actually go in there and you could make this like, uh, you know. 59% or you know, whatever you want basically so um, so that's what those numbers are I, I don't use them for, for pre-flop but I use them for uh, post-flop um, I use 60% 75% and 100% and um, I, I raise this a little bit more than normal I should say here because there's some uh, dead money as well just to, to raise a little bit more uh, a little bit more pot size but um, yeah I mean basically I'm just you know, when I whiff flops, uh, betting 60% most of the time, and, um, you know, against fish, when I nail the flop, I'm going to bet, uh, uh, you know, 100%. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I'll kind of use 75%, uh, maybe in a spot like this, for instance, uh, against a, a fairly good player, but I've also got a good hand, so I want to get some money in there, so. Uh, I think I'll just call on a spot like this. Uh, it's a pretty good hand to play against uh, a fish in position. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I don't really see any point in raising in a spot like this. I think it's definitely the best play is just to call um, a spot like this. Uh, obviously, just going to bet. Um, yeah, in a spot like this, we're, uh, we're just going to raise and just play for stacks against this, this kind of player. Um, it's possible that he has like a, picked up kind of some sort of flesh drawer or something, so I don't mind getting it in. Or, I don't mind charging him, I should say. Um, he is, uh, I expect that if I just call on the turn there, he'll fire a lot of rivers as well, so, um, Calling wouldn't be terrible, but, uh, okay, cool. So it also allows us obviously to get the, uh, stacks in, uh, when he, when he has something good there. So, I mean, pretty standard stuff. I think, uh, there against a fish, we're going to be against a regular, uh, we're not really as, as happy to, uh, to raise the turn and get it in. I think we're going to be, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like that ace seven hand before. Um, I think it was where you kind of like puke 
get it in or something, but um, against a fish, it, it kind of changes things. Uh, uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to just get it in. Um, I see that most boards, but um, out of position on a board like this, I think I'll uh, just check. And uh, If he checks behind and there's a safe card on the turn, uh, I'll probably uh, you know, stab at it uh, as played. I'm just going to uh, let it go. <clears throat> so and uh yeah i mean obviously that's just the um the importance of playing fish there i mean i don't you know it's kind of a silly point to uh to go over but you know fish give you money <laughs> you know i mean uh a reg is probably not gonna go broke especially on that board with kings there against me that often, or as a fish will, because I can't fold their over pair. So, um, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, we won a whole stack there. So it's uh, it's just uh, a lot more profitable against these kind of players, obviously. And now, of course, he's on tilt as well, so it's just free money on uh, whatever else he uh, he has left there. So <laughs> just wait wait for a uh, anything above average, basically. So. I just raising up the limper here on table four. Again, I make it a little bit more when I'm out of position. So I made it 6x, where if I was in position there, I probably, uh, if I was on the button there, I would have only made it 40 cents because I don't mind uh, playing a pot against him when I'm in position. Uh, same thing as I keep saying, min, min three bets. They got any kind of stack, we're not folding. Um, they do this a lot where they'll just kind of check here, because I think a lot of his range is nonsense as well, like, uh, but I, I'm not going to, uh, stab yet. If he, if he checks the turn, I will stab. Um, uh, it's kind of a weird spot. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, calling with ace high is okay. Raising, I guess, has some merit. I, I just really don't really know what he has uh, at this point. It's a tiny pot. Uh, uh, I don't think I need to fight for every pot, so I, I don't mind just letting it go. I definitely think his range there is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's some big hands, but then it's some complete nonsense as well. They just get pissed off and, um, you know, just want to fight back, you know, so, so how did this guy get money again? Did he just reload or did he actually win a pot? I don't know. So he just reloaded. Okay. To seven dollars. All right. Just want to be, uh, see what's going on there. Cause he's, uh, um, man. I don't think it's profitable to uh, s set mine there against a stack size, a player with a stack that small. Um, I think the best play there is to 3-bet squeeze, get it in, which I think would have been okay. Um, I'd like to have a little bit better of a hand, but um, yeah. it's. Uh, I, I don't think that you can set mine there profitably, especially out of position. Uh, it's just so much more difficult to extract money when you're out of position.
Uh, this guy's folded to 100% of three bets so far. I don't, um, when he pulls the little stop and go, or whatever you call this, I really don't see any point in raising here, but obviously never folding. And, um, hmm. um, it's pretty interesting. He's pretty tight so far. Um, man, oh man. I mean, I don't think there should be a three in his range that often. Um, man, this is really gross. Um, this is not really aggressive at all. Um, uh, I don't know. It's um, A call there isn't that bad. I just don't think a player who seems to be that passive is... Uh, I think if they've got ace queen or ace king there, or sorry, ace queen or ace jack, and possibly even ace king there, that that they're not, you know, just gonna immediately fire that river. So I, I don't know. It's it's really weird. I really would have liked to see what he had there, but um, I think call or fold there is okay. Um, we get three bet. That's a four x three bet. Um, yeah, I uh, I generally just don't uh, don't call a whole lot of three bets. Um, perhaps if you made it a little bit smaller, I might have uh, considered calling there. Uh, if I had something a little bit more decent, maybe a pocket nines, something like that, I'd be more inclined to call because my, uh, I, I think I can win the hand with uh, uh, unimproved a lot more often than I can with pocket threes. Uh, since I have, like, nothing basically at all, I think I'll take a stab at it. I mean, I've got a backdoor flush draw, two overs. It's, a, it's also, it's a pretty hard flop for them to have hit, so, um, I think it's okay to just take a stab there. Uh, when the fish calls and I hit, now I'm going to be getting it in for sure. Plus, he's obviously got a short stack, so. so. Pretty interesting call by him on the flop there. But he's a 67-6, so it's pretty standard for him, I guess. <clears throat> Table three is pretty amazing, obviously. <laughs> Jeez.
Uh, table one, uh, player hasn't played a hand yet. I'm just going to steal with basically any two. Um, doesn't seem like they want to play poker, so... So I'll just take their blind. <laughs> Wish I could pick up something on uh, table three here because I've got two ginormous fish behind me. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, this guy definitely uh, is a fish at this point. So I think that might be the same guy from... I'm not sure if it is. There was another guy that was uh, just limp folding again and again. We've only got eight hands on this guy, so I'm not sure. Um, I expect this Kobe guy to be set mining pretty much 100% of the time, so I think this, you know, he's never hit this, so um, so I'm not even really looking at him at all. I'm just making a standard C bet against a fish here on a board where I don't think he'll have much very often, so um, I can just bet half pot and take it down there. It's really important, I think, to to really have people on ranges and to just... You know, I could just look at that flop and I know that this Kobe guy absolutely hates it. He's set mining every single time, so literally, unless he has pocket deuces here, he's just an, uh, a non-factor in the hand. Like, you can just auto bet and take it down on that flop, so really I'm just pretending he's not even in the hand and I'm just making a C bet, a pretty standard C bet in position against the fish. So we've had no action with uh, no action with aces or kings in any of these videos yet. So we've got the massive fish to our right here. So hopefully this hand we can get action. Uh, it's one of those spots where I won't balance my range either. When he does his limp in, uh, I'll probably just make it like 50 cents or something because he's going to call if he wants to. So uh, I can just make it a little bit more than, than normal. Um, against these kind of players, you, you really don't need to, uh, you know, hide anything or, or be balanced. Just when you got a good hand, just raise it up. So. And uh, it's a pretty good spot because he's obviously just getting sick of me at this point. Um, I actually, um, I don't really like racing here actually because I'm not really scared of any card on the turn. And uh, I think that he'll probably continue to bet here on the turn almost any time. And, and I'll just obviously ship it in. So. Um. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't bet the turn. Uh, that was the whole point, is to getting him to bet the turn, because I think that if I raise the flop there, I think he folds a lot of the time. So that was pretty much the whole plan, was to um, just get him to uh, to bet the turn so that he puts more money in the pot, basically. Uh, with the pocket fours here against a pretty active guy, I'm just going to three bet rather than uh, try to set mine, because I don't think it'll be uh, profitable to set mine there a lot. Uh, he doesn't have a huge stack, but for a mini raise uh, in position, I, I think we can uh, profitably uh, get in there. And obviously, I won't be screwing with him. You know, obviously, we hit the nuts, but uh, if I hadn't have hit the nuts, uh, I wouldn't be messing with him under any circumstances, considering how many pots I've won. From I expect him to flip out here almost all the time here, and. Uh, yeah, he he's not gonna fold anything to me at this point, so um it's pretty much just free money I think. He'll probably jam the river here, I would think. No. Okay, well I'll just do it for him, I guess then. Yeah. <laughs> 
Wow. Let's see, not quite the hit there. <laughs> That's really, uh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess to him, well, he, I mean, he had a pretty good hand, obviously. So that's why he didn't, uh, I was like, why isn't he flipping out? He, he should have been, if he had any ace, anything there, he should have been just auto-shipping it in. I guess it's because he had a huge hand in his mind, so, which he basically did, actually. I mean, uh, top trips and then the boat, so. That's why that hand played out so weird. I think that if he had nothing at all, that he would have flipped out there uh, every single time, so. Uh, fish, uh, obviously, ten when when they uh, hit a big hand, which is for them is two pair plus. Um, they tend to slow play it uh, as much as possible. So that's why that hand played that way. Uh, I still don't expect him to fold much of anything here against me, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm just going to let it kind of go with that, that spot, that hand there. It's really just player dependent. Most most of the time when anybody normal uh, limps my blind like there, I'll, I'll raise deuce nine suited, but uh, it's just kind of the dynamic that I have with this guy right now. Uh, you can see the difference that I folded here. A slightly better hand in queen eight offsuit, whereas with queen six offsuit, uh, in position, I chose to raise instead. Um, it's just because of position, basically. Just giving up here on table three uh, against the fish. Uh, with a hand like this, with the queen six, um, uh, I generally like to, uh, I don't really like to see bet there because I think that um, we're not really getting called by uh, by worse, basically ever. And we do have some showdown value and I don't want to allow him to just kind of flip out and take the pot from me with a, a kind of bluff. So uh, I prefer to uh, just do a delayed see bet and, uh, you know, when he... Um, does that on the turn. I don't think there's much choice we have but to fold. That's it. It's pretty rare that uh, that they do that, that they have anything there. So that it happens from time to time. So yeah, I mean, th these games definitely seem pretty good. It's it's really bizarre how much they can change. I mean, they, they look fantastic in these last uh, in this last video here. There's basically fish everywhere. So yeah, I don't know. You just kind of gotta uh, just look around, keep your eyes open. Um, and, um, different times of day. I, I don't know. It's uh, it's really really strange. Uh, just how much better the games are uh, right now compared to table. Uh, or sorry, uh, videos uh, one and two in this uh, at NL10 here, where every single table was all like 15 10s or 15 10 tag players. So I don't know. But yeah, I'm just uh, closing up the tables here and. Uh, I'm going to bring in a uh, hold a manager in a sec here and just go over the, uh, the statistics of all three videos. Probably played about uh, 
five or six hundred hands, or probably about six hundred hands, uh, as we uh, as I normally do across uh, three videos. <clears throat> Pretty sure I won, which is always nice. So, I mean, after this, uh, the Crush in the Microbes 2 series will be complete, so um, I'm not really sure what I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, do uh, for next month. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, I'd be happy to uh, to field them. Um, last month, I did a whole series on table selection, and that was basically just because a guy kind of asked me about it in a private message, so... Um, you know, I make these videos for you guys, and uh, if you got any suggestions, I'd be really happy to hear them. Um, I want to make the videos that you guys want to see. So, um, my plan at this point is to make some, try to do some theory-related uh, videos and hold a manager. Probably, uh, most of my videos have been live play, so I like to do some uh, some theory-based ones. So, um, uh, that's kind of the rough plan at this point, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely open to any suggestions. So. All right, so I'm just going to bring a hold of manager in here at this point. Um, where are we there? All right, so okay, so I had a uh, had a couple sessions that makes me look good again. Where I didn't <laughs> the the last uh, couple sessions at merge were pretty awful, but uh, we did very well here. Made uh, eighteen bucks, ran at uh, eleven big bets per hundred. This is actually over eight hundred hands. Played at twenty one nineteen. So yeah, I mean that's just because I'm playing four tables. Um, and yeah, pretty much just um, I think just took a took advantage of a lot of uh, bad players. To be honest, I think uh, most of the winnings came um, with a couple key big pots, uh, and both of them were against really bad players. This is something I mean I've talked about table selection so much, especially lately on my blog and and even in videos. And I mean it, it, I just kind of I go through my sessions and I look at okay where did I win the big money, right? And um I think you can see in these uh all three or all basically all the top hands here I won them all against the huge fish, right? Um this hand with the uh the jack queen uh this is against a guy the stats okay they're the stats. I mean he's a it's a forty percent V pip, you know, and we play a massive pot here and it's you know um uh, so you know, I mean, it's if, if you really aren't convinced yet on the uh, the power of table selection and how important it is in today's games, even at the lowest stakes, you know, I challenge you to just go through your hands and uh, at the end of um, heck, even do it at the end of a week or a month or something, and just count sort sort the sort the hands and and hold a manager by all the hands, uh, sort them by the pots where the the biggest amount won and do a rough count on how many of these are against huge fish. You know, and I think you can, you'll find the answer to yourself about how important uh, table selection is. Again, this is another huge uh, 200 big blind pot that I won, and it's again against a guy with a VPIP of 38, um, who, you know, played his ace-king really poorly. Um, you can just basically look down every single pot here, Again, another hand against a guy with a with a mid forties V pip. Um, he got it in really bad here, thirty four percent. Oops. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure about these other ones. Uh, this guy, well, not a total fish. He definitely was pretty bad. This is the hand where he called down with uh, with the ace there, uh, and 
pretty bad spot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I really think that uh, that really says it all. I mean, that's really what opened my eyes completely to, you know, the uh, how important table selection is. Um, you're winning most of your pots off the guys that are really bad, and um, if you want a big win rate, uh, that's the uh, the best thing that I can quote unquote teach anybody is uh, find tables with lots of really bad players hopefully have them on your right and uh just don't leave the table until they're broke basically so anyways guys uh i hope um you guys enjoyed this this series in its totality um if you have any questions please leave them in the uh the thread on the, in the coaching uh coaching uh videos forum on drag the bar and um again if you got any suggest suggestions for future videos i'd be uh more than happy to uh to listen to them so um thanks a lot for watching guys it's been black rain 79 with drag the bar.com